Another day, another spider yokai to ruin a good night's sleep. Sure, to learn about these things, you can go ahead and read a book or browse Reddit or something. But you know, there are those who browse Reddit all day and think they're smart, and then there are those who are productive members of society. And neither group is watching this video. Tsuchigomo means earth spider. Spiders can be scary, but they're easy to get rid of. However, the Tsuchigomo can grow as big as a building. To get rid of them, you'll need to find a bigger boyfriend. Sometimes they'll have a normal cute spider head, sometimes they'll have the head of an oni or demon, and sometimes they'll even have the body of a tiger but the legs of a spider, like some last minute Halloween costume. The Tsuchigomo can shapeshift and conjure illusions. One story told of a woman who led an entire army of yokai into battle. When she was struck down, the entire army poofed. It was all an illusion, and she turned out to be a big spider whose dreams got stepped on. Shapeshifting into a smoking hot woman who could boil a pot in 5 seconds is a common way to distract a man before killing him, but they can shapeshift into other people too. They can also make you sick. They've been known to come to a person's bed nightly as a Buddhist priest to cast some spider thread magic to keep the victim sick. Enough of these nightly rituals and it could be fatal. The Tsuchigomo is similar to the Jirogomo, which I already did a video about. They both can shapeshift, they can eat people, and they spend a lot on shoes. The difference is in their motivations. A Jirogomo just wants to eat handsome men. A Tsuchigomo can eat or kill any person for any reason. Doesn't have to be a man, doesn't have to be good looking. They might want to kill a famous hero for the clout, or they might be feeling bored that day. A word can accumulate different meanings over time and can be interpreted in different ways depending on context. Take the word daddy. In real life, it's perfectly fine for a daughter to call her father daddy, but on the internet, it has a totally different vibe. The word Tsuchigomo has traveled a long journey, a journey that began in Japan's origin story. The oldest known texts in Japan are the Kochiki and the Honshoki, which talk about Japanese mythology. In them, the first emperor, Emperor Jimu, was going around conquering people in his quest to claim Japan. There was a village of these short people that they called Tsuchigomo, earth spiders. Kind of rude to call them that, and it was ruder when Jimu and his men killed them all. Over time, Tsuchigomo became like the word barbarian, a nasty word that meant the native, less civilized people living on the Japanese islands, people who were not part of the main Japanese state. And then, over more time, the word evolved to mean any weirdo who lived differently from normal society. The oldest mention of a giant supernatural spider comes from this picture scroll called Tsuchigomo Zashi, made in the 1300s. It tells a story of one Minamoto no Raiko, a popular folk hero. He was a real dude, he actually existed, but he's mostly famous for the legends that formed around him. One day, Raiko is walking down a road with his follower, Watanabe no Tsuna. When they see a skull floating in the air, he's surprised. He has never seen a floating skull before. Usually they traveled on foot. The two follow the skull to a mountain. It leads them to this broken down mansion and then disappears. Now this mansion looks like it was once grand, but is now as empty and dead as anti-vax talk show hosts. Before entering the house, Raiko tells Tsuna to stay at the gate to keep a lookout. Inside, he runs into the strangest old woman with hair as white as snow and a demeanor as black as snow that someone spilled ink on. Her eyelids are flipped over her head like a hat. A long hairpin keeps her mouth open and her overly plump lips are tied around her neck. Her breasts sag to her lap like two flesh pendulums keeping time of her life and right now they're showing 11.59 p.m. The woman says she is 290 years old. She has served nine lords of this mansion with pride, but now her youth has vanished and her misery is eternal. She begs him to drive a sword into her and end it. Raiko ignores the crazy lady and walks further into the house. He can hear her droning on about her sad life. As day turns to night, a thunderstorm bursts from the clouds. Tsuna rushes inside but can't find his lord. He's afraid this is when monsters attack. The thought of running away peeks into his consciousness, but Tsuna decapitates it and stays put, waiting for his lord to return. Meanwhile, Raiko enters a room lit by a single lamp. 
A group of yokai of different shapes and sizes enters the room, laughs at him, then leaves. Raiko thinks this mansion is getting weirder, but a synonym of weird is interesting. A three-foot-tall creature enters the room, dressed as a nun. She has a huge face and short body with little stubby legs. She tries to blow out the lamp, but Raiko glares at her and she disappears. What next, he thought. A lovely woman enters. Her beauty stuns him as blood leaves the part of his brain responsible for movement and travels to another part of his body. But being a great hero, Raiko snaps out of it and slashes down at her, apparently his response to any beautiful woman. His blade swishes through the air and lands on the floor, breaking the wood and cracking the stone foundation. The commotion makes Tsuna run in. It seems like the woman had vanished before his sword hit, but the tip of Raiko's sword is missing. Plus, they see a trail of white blood on the floor. Following it leads them to a cave where they run into a 200 foot behemoth, a giant spider. Something shiny falls from the spider's body, and as it lands, they see that it's the tip of a sword and realize that this monster is the same woman from before. When a hero meets a monster, they make acquaintances through battle. The spider is strong, but Raikou prays to the gods and cuts off its head. The two men, being experienced warriors, inspect the corpse for loot. They see 1,990 skulls pour out from the gash that Raiko had made on the spider's body in the mansion. They make another cut, and out comes a bunch of smaller spiders the size of little kids. Deeper in its belly, they find 20 smaller skulls. Okay, that's enough looking, they say. They bury the skulls and burn the monster's home, all in a day's work. When the emperor hears of what happened, he is so impressed that he gives them each the governorship of a province. So, is there a moral to this story? Sure, judging from what I know about people back then, the moral is you should be careful of beautiful women, because they can trick even the strongest of men. For more yokai videos, check these out. We have a new emperor patron on Patreon, Jessica Lulo. Woohoo, you're awesome. We also have some new patrons, the Nguyen family, wow, a whole family, Lowry, Beth, Yilin, and Sibi Morales. Thanks so much, you guys. Alright, I love you, and spread the knowledge.